something special to show you. Last week, you will recall that we made this hat, I'll take it off the head, which I call my rice stitch hat. It has this lovely texture on the side. But it began with a very plain top, with just a plain circle. Um, and I referred you to the tutorial where I do that circle. Well, I've updated it. Now we can start with ribbing and then convert to the rice stitch. And I like that a whole lot better. Can you see this texture? We're going to start with your basic ring where it's very common, the common way to start um, any kind of crochet in the round, which is 12 double crochets uh, around a ring. This particular ring is made of a few chains uh, and slip stitch together. You can do a magic ring, you can do, uh, you can chain two and then use the first um, chain as your ring. It doesn't really matter. Now notice I'm doing, I'm going to, my first chain three is what counts as my first double crochet. And so I'm going to slip stitch into that chain three. And I have worked my tail underneath all of these stitches. So you can see I can pull it tight. And then in the end, I will um, sew it in and it will be beautiful. Okay, now we have the first row, first round of a standard crochet in the round which in this case is composed of 12 double crochets, including the initial chain three. We're going to chain or slip stitch into the top of that chain three. And then we're going to chain three to, to be our first double crochet in the second round. Now, because we're doing ribbing, where normally to do a second round, you would do two double crochets in each in the top of each stitch. In this case, in for each stitch, we're going to do one double crochet in the top and one front post double crochet around the post of that stitch. So that's what I've done with that chain stitch. Now the next stitch, let's see if I get this uh, stitch right there. And then around the post of the same stitch. So this is how it winds up. You will recall what I said in the first uh, tutorial about crocheting in the round, where if you think of it as pie slices or pizza slices, then it becomes easier. Where um, every stitch in your first round is the point of that pizza slice or your or your pie slice and in the second round every one of those slices no matter how many they are uh, in the second round usually every one of those slices is going to have two stitches and in the third round every one of those slices is going to have three stitches if you are a beginner or if this wedge slice theory is a little confusing to you, you might benefit from working with stitch markers to mark the beginning of each slice. I always, almost always rather, do the increase in the last stitch of a slice where, for instance, right now, every stitch gets two stitches so that we are increasing by 12. We started with 12, we increase by 12. In the third row, we're going to increase by another 12. So every wedge already has two. So the first stitch I will leave alone and the second stitch is where I will increase. And that's where it can become a little tricky when you're doing ribs like this. 
And I will say this is not the only way to do ribs when you're crocheting in the round. This is the way that works for me. Now we have come to the end of the round. And because we're doing alternating um, regular crochet and front post double crochet, it's very easy to just verify that we've got 12 pairs here because we started with 12. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 pairs of double crochet. Now, the first stitch of the third round is going to be a front post stitch. So because of that, I'm going to do my chain stitch behind the chain three from this round. And then I do another chain three and that makes my front post double crochet. The next stitch for this wedge is this front post double crochet. And what we're going to do is we're going to do one stitch in the top of that stitch. And then we're going to do a front post double crochet in the post of that stitch. So you see, this is where I am increasing in this first wedge in the last stitch of the wedge. Now, once again, in this round, the first stitch of the wedge is going to be front post. The second stitch is going to be in the top of the front post from before. And the third stitch is going to be in the post of the very same front post from before. So this is actually going to be pretty easy. Once you see what I'm doing here, I'm also going to write all of this out in the hope that it is helpful uh, and provide a link to that article, which will be on my blog. Um, but right now I'm just working on this particular round and it'll take a few minutes to finish it. So I'm going to go out of frame for that. Okay. And here we are, we have one last wedge to do. So as you recall, we're taking this wedge that in the, the second round has two stitches and we're turning it into a wedge that, oops, I didn't finish this previous wedge, a wedge that in the third round has three stitches. So in the first stitch, we do a front post. In the second stitch, we do a double crochet in the top of the stitch and then we do a front post in the post of the very same stitch and you can see maybe not as well with this yarn as I had hoped but you can see that each of these wedges has is composed of a front post a regular a front post and then here's a front post a regular and a front post and then a front post a regular and a front post so for round four what we're going to do is a front post two regulars and a front post so once again because we're beginning with a front post we're going to do our slip stitch behind the chain and then we're going to chain three and then we're going to do a regular double crochet in the uh, double crochet below and then in the front post from the double crochet below we're going to do another regular double crochet in the top of that stitch and a front post in the post of the same stitch 
So where we had three stitches in this wedge in round three, we have four in the same wedge of round four. So once again, we have a front post in the front post from below. We have a regular double crochet and the regular double crochet below. And the next stitch below is another front post. So we're going to do a regular double crochet in the top of that stitch. And then we're going to do a front post in the po around the post of that stitch. So once again, we're increasing in the last stitch of the wedge. And then another wedge, front post, double crochet, double crochet, front post. And so I will continue with this until I get to the end of the round and I will meet you then. And here we are, we have come to the very last wedge of the third round. Once again, what we're doing for this wedge and for every ridge, we start with a front post in the front post below. And then we do a regular double crochet in the double crochet below. And then in the last stitch of the wedge below, we do a regular double crochet in the top of the stitch and we do a front post around the post of the stitch. Very easy way to turn a wedge of three stitches into a wedge of four stitches. You know what I mean? So now moving on to round five, once again, we're going to start each of our wedges with a front post double crochet. Don't worry about the fact that we still have two front posts together. We will fix that when we get to round six. So we start with our front post. We do a regular double crochet in the regular double crochet before. The next stitch before is another regular uh, double, but we're going to turn it into a front post. Clever that. And then the last stitch from the previous wedge is a front post. So just like we did in the previous round, we're going to do a regular double crochet in the top and then a front post in the front post. And then we'll do the same thing in the next wedge. Front post in the front post regular double crochet in the regular double crochet. And then front post in the regular double crochet. And then in the final, stop it. Okay, my yarn is making me want to say things. And then in the final front post, we do a regular double crochet in the top of the, the stitch, and then we do another front post around the post of the very same stitch. That's our increase. Because, as you recall, I was saying that with every wedge, we increase in the last stitch of the wedge. So, where we had the one stitch, and then the two, and the three, and the four, and now we have five front post, regular, front post, regular, front post. So I will do one more on camera and then I'll finish the row and meet you when I am at the end of the row. Okay, I remember in the final front post we do a regular in the top of the front post and then a front post around the post of the front post of the very same stitch. 
and I'll catch you at the end of this round. Okay, here we are. We are in the last wedge of the fifth round. I've done my initial front post. I've done my regular. I'm going to do my front post around the regular from the previous uh, wedge. And then in the final uh, front post, I'm going to do a regular double crochet in the top of the stitch and a front post double crochet around the front post of the very same stitch. Now, you recall that I said that using the wedge theory, we try to always increase, I try to always increase in the last stitch of the wedge. This is going to be an exception because of this situation where we have the two double crochets together. So what we're going to do in the sixth round in order to create an absolute one-to-one -one alternation between regular double crochet, oops, let's see if I can get both loops, um, regular double crochets and um, um, front post double crochets. We're going to start with a regular double crochet in the first stitch of the wedge before. Then we're going to do a front post double crochet around the post of the very same stitch. So we're doing our increase in the first stitch instead of the last this time. Then we do a regular double uh, where we had a regular before, a front post where we had a front post before, a regular where we had a regular before, and a front post where we had a front post before. So, and then we have six in our wedge. So once again, in the very first stitch of the wedge, we're going to do a regular double crochet in the top of the stitch. We're going to do a front post double crochet around the post of the stitch. And then in the rest of the wedge, we have a regular and a regular, a front post in a front post, a regular in a regular, and a front post in a front post. Once again, at the beginning of the next wedge, we start with a regular. We do a front post in the front post of the very same stitch. We do a regular and a regular. We do a front post in a front post. We do a regular and a regular. We do a front post in a front post. And I think you can see what I'm doing here. We already have this one-to-one -one alternation in our um, stitches. So I'll just finish up this round and join you in a bit. Now you see I have just this last wedge to do. Once again, in the very first front post double crochet, I'm going to do a regular double crochet and then a front post double crochet around the front post that was there. Then I do a regular and a regular, a front post and a front post, a regular and a regular, and a front post and a front post. And that is the end of the circle. And you see in this very last round, 
I think the lighting is better that way. In the very last round, I have achieved this one-to-one -one alternation between the front post double crochets and the regular double crochets. So we can move on to the next round where we are no longer um, increasing and we're just uh, going vertical. And to do that, we just, we no longer increase any wedges. We just do stitch to stitch. You will recall since we're doing rice stitch that because this first stitch was a regular double crochet, the first stitch in the next row is going to be a front post double crochet. So once again, we do our slip stitch behind the chain and then do our chain three. This was a front post, so we'll do a regular double crochet. And hope that our yarn doesn't split any more than necessary. And because this was a regular double crochet, we will do a front post. Hours of endless fun. So now this is really where we started up in the um, a tutorial that I did last week for this rice stitch hat. So you can make this hat so that it has the ribs and then the rice stitch texture and then the uh, the single crochet um, uh, border at the bottom. Now because this is six rounds at the top instead of five, originally uh, I would have said five, you're going to want to size down with your hook or else you're going to wind up with a hat that might be a little too big. So you can size down with your hook and your yarn and you should be okay. Now, um, I would say no larger than an H for a um, a normal medium size um, adult head. This is an eye, but I only use that, well, because I like it and to show you. Um, um, but you can use an H or even a G, a uh, 4.5 or a 4, just and use a DK or even a lighter weight yarn. Just whatever you have, especially if you're doing um, hat not hate, whatever kind of blue yarn you have is going to work. And this is where we end and you can pick up um, with the uh, tutorial that I um, made last week in which we created this hat with this lovely texture. I wish I had used this yarn this week. Lessons learned. Anyway, thank you for joining me and sticking with me this long. As always, uh, please um, subscribe, like, comment, share all the standard YouTube crap, and keep coming back. Bye-bye now.